this robot was built for uh, the uh, sumo competition challenge. And uh, essentially, uh, the kids, they uh, designed their robots for the objective of pushing another robot out of the sumo ring. So they have to basically master, th you know, uh, the building of the robot for a particular objective, but then the programming of it. Um, we break it down into three behaviors. Uh, the robot has to hunt in order to find the other, ro uh, find the other uh, robot. Then it has to attack it, but it also has to retreat when it comes to the edge of the circle, so it, it stays in. So you'll see the three behaviors right here, right now. So as long as I don't have any robots in proximity, it simply does it, the hunting and the retreating. So it's, doing, it's hunting in a pattern. If it hits the edge of the circle, it then uh, retreats. But then if you put another robot in the ring, if it sees it, it tries to attack it. And it'll continue to try to attack it until the other robot loses. So I can show you, a, a, I can show you a, a boat that's uh, evenly matched, if you will. We've got two robots that are pretty evenly matched here, and And we have a winner. Basically what they're doing is they're using the remote to control the Vex robot to try and pick up the can. So they're learning how to release it and how to put it in the back in the holder. There's a holder right here. And if you lift it up all the way, you can hold the can in the back. And yeah. I'm in eighth grade and we just did it so we're like building the robots and just starting to use them so I think mostly for eighth grade this is just a demonstration of what they do representing the digital learning program from the elementary schools. I'm Sam Anthony from the Hood School. Chris Lindsay from the Batch. Helen Kelly from the Little School. So we each brought in a different um, activity or program that we have in the elementary levels. I have brought in uh, the Scratch program that the kids work on to create um, um, coding activities uh, to, sh to showcase what they learn during their social studies classes. I also brought the Ozobots. They're little robots that have sensors and they detect different colors and they move along different lines that you can draw. Um, 
and also the Lego We Do program that we're doing this year with the fourth graders. And um, I brought the B-Bots to show what our youngest students are doing, so you can see the baby behind here. Um, so this is how we really introduce students to programming, using these little bees to program. Um, and then we also brought the 3D printer, which um, we're using to have kids use a program called Tinkercad to design 3D prints. And I came over from the little school with my tech crew. I have uh, four students that are here today, and they're helping people learn how to use the iPads and augmented reality.
spring and we started to think about this, we said we would take the family community piece off the top of my head of our relationship with Amazon. And we, we also then brought in uh, our Women in STEM presentation. So we're very excited. We kind of combine that with a showcase of student work. And Salem was here tonight, and I hope you guys got to see that and stop by that table. Amazon's here as well. And uh, we're very excited. Dan is going to do his introduction. I just want to thank Dan. I really worked with Dan over the summer to, to sketch this out. But over these last few weeks, Dan has done so much uh, really logistic and planning and all that. So thank you so much, Dr. Dan. I'll hand it over to you. <coughs> thank you very much. And thank you for everyone who is here you know, right now. Because, uh, you know, as I was looking at this event, and the kids' projects are great. But it, you know, with STEAM and STEM, I really think one of the essential components for kids is just exposing them at a very young age to experiences like listening to these fabulous women from Fidelity. We're going to speak about women's experiences in STEM careers. And also, Amazon has been a great supporter of us in the community. We're going to talk to us about how you know, they're in arthritic and their robotics and how they really kind of can connect to STEM careers. So thank you, everyone who's here now. And thank you for having your children here. I think it's an amazing opportunity to expose them to these features, get them to see these projects, get them excited about this type of curriculum in schools. And I just think we're, we're very lucky to have such an intelligent, talented staff and also uh, great community resources that can support us. Uh, so I won't you know, hold us up any longer. I, I'm going to now introduce our uh, Fidelity group of women in STEM. Uh, Meredith Brennan, Kate Corkery, Danielle Carrier and Sarah, Sally Lilly will take it from here. Thank you. Uh, and we do that through many different venues, but uh, 
Um, the primary places we do it or we work in is helping people stay for retirement, um, and then also helping people stay for other goals. And you think, oh, how does you know science or technology, engineering, math fit into that? It, it's so so important. A lot of what we do at Fidelity would not be able to be done at scale for the uh, 20 million people who work worldwide without a huge amount of technology and infrastructure behind it. So we've got a big website, we work with individual companies and power their uh, benefits programs, etc. And we've been making a huge investment in technology over the last 20 years. Most recently, we have a program called LEAP. Um, and we have a deep graduate here with us tonight, Sarah, and she'll talk to you about her experiences. Um, but the LEAP program was designed to uh, attract uh, candidates that are graduating from university with backgrounds in technology to come in and learn uh, how we apply technology fidelity with a couple of months of training, and then they go and work in different business units. So I actually personally started my career in, 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 in technology at fidelity, and it was through a uh, program similar to LEAP. So I'm going to uh, get going with introductions. So Mary Beth, do you want to come here? Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Beth um, I went to Somerville High School and then on to Boston College. I did a double major in uh, mathematics and computer science. When I was in high school, I knew I had an interest in math and science. And I also was interested in maybe being a teacher. <laughs> um, since Boston College did So project management is running technology projects, delivering the software to production and for the users to work on. Um, I also have my PMP, which is a project management professional, and that means yeah, I need to take another four hour test to achieve that, and I need to get recertified every three years. I started actually before healthcare, I worked on pieces of a missile guidance system. <laughs> a database of those, and then I moved on to healthcare, which I love because it was more related to like, oh, I go to the emergency room, I break my arm, I pay copay, um, so the software around healthcare, and then I moved into financial services, um, multiple companies around Boston. Um, I was a developer, I started coding right out of school, um, and then I moved into more of an analyst role which is um, deciding how the software should work or analyzing data to figure out how to display it on the screens. I mean, everybody uses apps, right? Um, and now I manage those projects to get this software to the people that I mentioned earlier. Um, I've been at Fidelity since 2009. I'm currently in the Fidelity Support Center. I'm the product owner for the Fidelity. Um, it's, we call it level one, but what I always say to people is if Fidelity.com goes down, we kick into gear and we get on a crisis bridge and we get all the bodies involved to bring the, the application back online. Um, I, I think one of ten siblings, six out of the ten are in technology. Um, and I'm a mom of five children, only one in technology so far. But I do have the A, my daughter's daughter masters and I'm therapy right now. Leslie University, and I live in Stone. I'm a basketball coach, and I'm also a Girl Scout leader, and I love to travel. And just a technology fact, I do Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter, but I don't have a Facebook account. <laughs> so I'm not the typical mother. <laughs> um, and then I mentioned about my skills. So let's move on to Kate. So as you may have recognized from my accent, I did grow up here. So I actually uh, went to school in Ireland, and I'm Irish. Um, and I, um, when I think about science and technology, and I see that video, it makes me laugh because my parents couldn't get me away from anything to do with science. Um, my Christmas present when I was uh, 10 was a microscope. <laughs> it was like the happiest moment opening that up. I was like, oh yeah, I can take care of these things. So, Loved, loved, loved science and loved technology, loved math the whole way through uh, my, my schooling. Um, and when I graduated from high school in Ireland, you actually choose which path, which um, path you want to go. You actually choose a very, very specific degree. And I really was between becoming a doctor, which is a very scientific route, or doing the degree that I did, which was 
business information systems. Uh, so that was really where business and technology come together, and it was a really, really great branding. Uh, and so how did I end up here? So that, that university program was a fantastic um, uh, internship, and it was here in Boston. So Delta Investments hired me to come for six months, and I came, and I loved my job. Um, it was a great experience. It's always really great to travel and, and work in a different environment, work with different people. Um, and so having grown up in Ireland, the opportunity to come and work in the United States was just you know, super, so adventurous. So when I finished my internship, which was working in the uh, Workplace Services Division of Delta, which helps um, employees at different companies save for their retirement. Um, I was offered a full time position to come back, and so I came back, did two years in that role, and then I moved into uh, another role at Fidelity, uh, helping build platforms to uh, invest money for people saving uh, for very, various different goals in their what we call their retail accounts. So we've got a savings account in the bank. The idea was we could go and invest that at Fidelity and actually uh, make a higher return that the bank offers. So uh, over the last two years, I've actually been working in that division. It's called Strategic. Advisors technology. Um, and I've actually had a really, really interesting career in that I've had a chance to manage and lead people. So a huge part of my career has been about um, elevating becoming a more senior woman, woman at Fidelity, um, and oftentimes I'm the only woman in the room. So being here today and encouraging more women to get involved in this career path is really, really a passion of mine because we need more diversity and we need more different more viewpoints from people of different walks of life, be it race, be it gender. To, to sit and build systems, because if you do not have diversity, you will build technology that only works for one of a products that only work with one type of person. So it's very, very important to have different people enter this field. So very, very passionate about that. Um, so about me, um, I live in Cambridge. Uh, I put a picture up here because I became a US citizen uh, in, in uh, May, which was a big, huge thing for me. Derivatives, 
all sorts of sort of funny money products there. Uh, but so that was really interesting. It gave me a really interesting view into New York City and helped me choose that I wanted to live in the Boston area and get out of New York. But you know, every experience is a good experience, whether it teaches you where you want to go and maybe where you don't want to go. Um, so none of that was really related to technology. I mean, I use technology. Obviously, you know, ATMs have technology. The derivatives were all traded in various systems, and I had to learn those types of systems. But uh, when I came to Fidelity, I came to actually work on writing requirements for derivatives as a business analyst. So again, still on the business side. But that project was to build new technologies and new systems to support fund accounting and calculations across all of Fidelity's mutual funds. Um, and through that project, I ended up finding my way into technology project management, and I ended up managing a software development team where I had what you typically think of maybe as someone in, in technology. Java coders, people who work with a ton of spreadsheets, writing VBA, calculations, and installs, deliveries, Lots of interesting stuff there. Uh, recently, I moved into technology risk. So that may sound like the most boring side of technology, managing the risk around it. But the group I work in is actually Fidelity's incubator and uh, new development, new business development. So it's called Enterprise Services. So I don't know if many of you know, but Fidelity does a lot of stuff that doesn't relate to financial services at all. We have an oil field. We used to have a tomato farm, and now we have an almond farm. We have a hotel, a Seafront Hotel in Boston. Um, we have a hedge fund, so I guess that's financial services. Uh, and a number of other investments that you would think about. And all of those bring really interesting risks that are typically outside of financial services, but they're all using technology. So a lot of my work now is understanding and helping these new startup businesses figure out their risk profile and how to use new technologies in a way that makes your use of them through a platform or an interface safe. Uh, some interesting products we're working on is a college price check that will be coming out next year, where we're actually going to be able to show you what different colleges will actually cost based on how savings has gone, how your child's profile or your, your profile, many of you are probably thinking about college in the next year or two, uh, how your, your profile, your academics line up, what kind of uh, aid you may get, and produce real costs and then help you get into those schools with another tool. So that's a really interesting one. But when you think about that, that has a lot of moving parts that customers interact with. Uh, I've also done some work, work on Fidelity's most recently announced line of business, um, Fidelity Digital Assets. So that was announced on Bloomberg very recently. And that's Fidelity offering cryptocurrency custody products for institutions. So when you think about cryptocurrency, it really doesn't often align with Fidelity, which is a more conservative company focused on saving in 401ks. Um, cryptocurrency is speculative and interesting, but it turns out there are a lot of institutions that are really interested in it. So I've been helping manage the risk profile of that company and getting them ready to handle all of the stuff that comes with custody and crypto, which is something no one's done before at Fidelity. So when I switched into this new group, I was able to see so much of the innovative side of Fidelity and the products and services we're looking at that will drive us into the future. And I love innovation. I've spent a lot of time on that. I've been an innovative speaker at um, some elementary schools in Melrose. My mom was a teacher there. Um, so my passion and the stuff I used to do outside of work, I now do every day. So that's been a big change for me and a lot of fun. Uh, a little bit about me outside of work. See from my photos, I'm his mom to two silly kids, um, Jack and Charlie, and they love sports, the beach, and swimming. So as much as they try to get them into winter sports, they're constantly asking for an indoor pool. Uh, and I grew up in Western Mass, in Sun Meadow, which is up by Springfield. I'm now living in Reading. And uh, as far as social media, I succumbed and joined LinkedIn and uh, Instagram, but I don't have a Facebook, which I think most people find very bizarre. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
point that has been mentioned by my colleagues a little bit earlier, and that's Fidelity's technology training program for music graduates at college. Um, so I lived in North Carolina for five months there with a hundred other new technologists my age, and we spent two months in classrooms and three months in um, working on projects, uh, small scale projects for some of the business units at Fidelity. And I graduated from that in February of this year, and now I work full time um, for the same team that I interned for. And I really love um, that I get to combine my love of collaboration and talking to people and interviewing and um, also with research and I um, was part of the Master's Club when I was here, and I also uh, co-founded the GSA when I was here, and I only use Snapchat and LinkedIn for social media, so I kind of break them all of like, what I would have been able to do. So here is just a graphical vis um, visualization um, that shows, according to this, STEM jobs are growing at a faster rate in other fields. Um, faster today than it was about 10 years ago. And here, um, money isn't everything, of course, but it's an important consideration when you have to decide what your lifestyle expectations are post-college. Um, so choosing a STEM job with just a high school diploma uh, has significantly higher earnings than a non-STEM job at that level. Um, as you can see, the gap, the gap does shrink over time, but it never closes. Um, so ending up in a STEM career um, overall, on average, tends to pay more. And so the key takeaway from this today is, um, even though you may not be headed on a direct path to a STEM field, um, always be open to whatever your career path may take you. Many of the opportunities um, that are going to be coming out in the next few years are available in STEM or adjacent uh, areas, or at least closely related to that. Um, so my final emphasis for this is that careers are paths and that whatever you choose, um, just do well at whatever you choose and it's not a final destination. Like that, that first job out of college is not the, the place that you are going to let it We are the North Carolina High School's uh, change team, which is the uh, educational robotics and programming group. Um, we do a primary focus in education and ex exploration. Uh, we do a lot of conferences uh, and build a lot of really fun robots that we get to bring around places and goof off with. Um, we've worked, we have a couple different programs uh, going right now. We have our robots, which are Tetrix robots that we are using and playing around with as well as we are running in or in the process of um, finishing up a uh, cacao farming project. We're growing cacao uh, plants in one of our teachers' garages and we are writing the software and hardwiring a system that collects um, light amounts, water, uh, soil temperature, humidity, room temperature, things like that and compiles all that data and decides when the plants need to be watered and how much. Um, which we have actually running behind us. So this is a piece of our cacao farming project. So what's currently running is a program that we wrote that collects uh, the ambient light that hits a sensor that is uh, hardwired in over here. Yeah, so that's the uh, photo, um, photo resistor, so it measures light. 
We have a digital to analog uh, converter, so that takes the, the uh, analog signal from the sensor and converts it to a digital signal. And uh, we as students wired the whole thing together and plugs it, it into a uh, Raspberry Pi, which is a small user-friendly, uh, uh, programmer-friendly uh, computer, um, which we've then programmed to simply output those in a list right now. So that number changes as the light changes in the room. Alright, so this is a HTML, which is basically the base code for any sort of website. So like uh, CNN, Fox News, Nessun, all that runs off of this basic right here. So if you look over here at the bigger monitor, you can see it has links to different program files and such. A uh, CSS file, it's basically your uh, style, how you want the website to look. So you'll have like, a bunch of things like the background color, uh, some of your banners will also be linked into there. there. This here is just a bunch of other link sheets also hooked into uh, JavaScripting, so to change pages and stuff like that. As you can see here, that's all the JavaScript for this particular website. And then this is all stuff. This is like stuff like your text, your, like where you'd input the CSS to display the images over the HTML file. As you can see it right here, we have a story It starts out so here. Uh, this was done by a student in class. He made the own graphics himself and then imported them so they'd run over the website. Okay. And then there's a nice little continue button. And then that runs another script to change over to the next website. And so then it goes on part two, so on and so forth. You can go back and continue. And then it, he has it starting so you know um, every page what the story title is. And then you scroll down, read through as you would. But take a look at some of the CSS files he has going on here. You see, you get stuff like the content. That's how big you want the content to be displayed. It, these are just different variables he input himself, so that way he would know what they mean or how they function. So when he's looking back, if there's some sort of error, he knows how to debug it and fix it. And then basically it goes through the same all throughout the whole time.